Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see how diffusion or where will diffusion occur in plants. So when you talk about a plant, a plant and like all other living organisms is made up of several cells which are there inside this plant. So each of these plant cells look somewhat like this. Now when you talk about the plasma membrane, this yellow colored boundary which you see around the plant that is the plasma membrane. We have spoke about plasma membrane and its properties in one of our previous lessons. So this plasma membrane is a selectively selectively permeable membrane that means it selectively allows some particles to pass through it and it doesn't allow certain particles to pass through it. So diffusion or the movement of particle occurs across this plasma membrane by the process of diffusion. So now inside this plant you will have several such cells. Now the way I am drawing it, it is not actually like that. The cells are extremely minute that you cannot, you can see them only through a powerful microscope. So when you have cells like this, how will the transport of materials happen? It will happen from one cell to another, right? So this movement will happen by passing through the plasma membrane. So there the process of diffusion will come into picture. So that is why, that is where diffusion is significant when we talk about transporting plants. So now let us talk about the different types of diffusion. Now broadly there are two types of diffusion. The first is simple diffusion. Now as the name says, no complication at all, it is simple diffusion. So here what will happen? Particles will directly move across the membrane. So from region of high concentration towards the region of low concentration, particles will move across the concentration gradient by themselves. They do not need the support of anything else. So let us take an example of a, of a region which has a slope like this. Now this slope, the top of the slope denotes the region of high concentration and the bottom of the slope denotes the region of low concentration. Now, simple diffusion is that type of diffusion where the particles directly move across the concentration gradient. This particle independently moved from region of high to region of low concentration. It did not need anyone's help or any other particle's support. So it happens by itself across a concentration gradient. So that is simple diffusion. The next type of diffusion is facilitated diffusion. What is facilitated diffusion? Facilitated. The word facilitated is related to the term facilitator or to facilitate. That means you need somebody else to facilitate the movement. That, like how you would have heard of the term facilitator in your examination center or something. So there is a person who actually helps you to do things, who, who is there to assist you. So those kind, of a per, those kind of persons are known as facilitator. So here the movement of the particles across the concentration gradient will not happen by itself. So transport proteins help particles to move across the membrane. So here the transport proteins, they are special type of proteins which carry these particles from region of high concentration towards region of low concentration. That is why these transport proteins are known as facilitators and this type of diffusion is called facilitated diffusion. Now let us look at the same example. There we saw, in case of simple diffusion, we saw that if you have a stone, it will directly move down the hill from region of high concentration towards region of low concentration. Now let us suppose that the same stone, if you consider, the same stone has to come down the hill. That is, it has to come down from high concentration to low concentration. But now you have a small barrier in between. So there is a small barrier in between. So when this stone tries to come down, it gets blocked. So the stone is not able to cross this hill on its own or it is not able to move down the hill on its own because of that small barrier in between. So that means how, but, but still it has to move down the hill because it is moving from high to low concentration. But it needs somebody's help. Now let us suppose if you put the same stone inside a big jar and then 
if the jar is able to roll down the hill even though there is a small uphill in between but that is too small when compared to the size of the jar so the jar is able to roll even beyond that and the jar is able to carry the stone from high to low concentration so what is this jar this jar is nothing but the facilitator so this is the function which is performed by the transport proteins so in facilitated diffusion, the particles cannot move on its own from region of high to low concentration. So they need somebody, they need somebody to carry them. So they are called carrier proteins or transport proteins. So now the question is how transport proteins carry them, right? So now knowing about the facilitated diffusion, there might be few questions in your mind. That how transport proteins facilitate diffusion, how the transport proteins are able to carry substances. Now, why is it that only some substances need transport proteins? Why not all substances are able to uh, move across a membrane by simple diffusion? What is so special in some substances that they are not able to cross the membrane, even from a region of high concentration towards a region of low concentration? So let us answer these questions to understand facilitated diffusion. If Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.